What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 61 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today we are playing in the second qualifying phase of the Champions League. We are taking on the Welsh side TNS. I'm hoping for a good result here. It's going to be a tricky game. It is of course the first game of this, our ninth season at the club. And um, yeah, to mark the occasion, I thought we'd do this live com of the first game of the year, as always. Anyway, we should cover the transfers, because we've had a summer of dealings, and to be honest, it's been a bit of an underwhelming one. Uh, I have been looking for players, I'm trying to find players who are really going to strengthen the side, and to be honest, I'm struggling. Uh, just a quick look at the outs before we get into the ins. Uh, you can see we've had a few players go out. Notable ones, Maloey has gone to Stead Rene, uh, and we already knew he was going to Rene, so it's not a massive miss, I guess. Leon O'Connor left at the end of his contract, he now doesn't want to re-sign with us. The 20-year-old Gibraltarian was a product of our academy, a good player, a useful player to have, but in the last kind of year or so he did become a little bit obsolete, and so he did not want to renew his contract at the club. Uh, Manuel Cruz has gone out on loan to New York Red Bulls. Wasn't a decision I took lightly, this one. Um, to be honest, he, he would probably fit in my first team still, but we have such an abundance of centre mids, and I think he's going to benefit a lot from playing in uh, New York. They, I kind of felt like a loan was probably a fairly good deal for us to do with him. So he's gone out, 19 years old. Hopefully he'll come back and he'll be a, a quality player for us. And that experience that he's going to gather is going to help him a lot. Anyway, Eric Ongelez here. You can see he left on a free. And then he was actually picked up by Seattle Sounders, the left midfielder. Um, pretty good for him. It's a, a solid move. We don't get any money as part of that deal, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, he, he did okay in his time at the club, Ongelez. But he didn't want to renew his contract. We have better left midfielders now. And so he left. Anyway, there were a few other transfers, but they're mostly young players going out on loans, players you just aren't familiar with. To be honest, I'm not that familiar with because I take one glance at them and then decide they're just never going to be good enough for the first team. So we'll move on to the ins. And as I mentioned, been a little bit underwhelming so far. No kind of real talent suddenly added to the side. A few youngsters uh, from North America. Bradley Eck here, just a good little centre-back, 18 years old. Provides some squad depth, could improve a little bit in the future. Uh, just good backup to get relatively cheap. We also have Locklear here who is a Canadian goalkeeper. He's actually Canada's first choice goalkeeper. We picked him up on a free transfer. He was playing for Calgary Foothills who are kind of a, a non-professional club in the USA. Pretty good player to pick up on a free I think. Uh, hopefully he can provide some decent backup. We also picked up Walter DeSol. I found this guy because his agent offered him to me. When I scouted him his potential was like really high. Since he's joined the club it's now underwhelming all of a sudden. He is one of those rare breed of players however who generate as a free agent and sometimes these guys can be really really good. He's only 16. He might improve a little bit. Italian player. Uh, I think he's the first Italian we've ever had in the side so a little bit of a landmark there. Anyway the next three signings for Three loan signings, uh, all coming from English clubs. The first one here, Molesworth, just a really, really good left back, if I'm honest. We picked him up. Will probably be our first choice left back, I think, this year. The English player joins us from uh, Newcastle. We don't have to pay any contribution towards his wage, which is quite nice. The next player we brought in, Adam Smith, just another good kind of low need to bring in. Adds a bit of squad depth. Good striker, very good player who I think will be more than sufficient backup in our team. You can see. Really, he is our second best left attacking mid. And if we look at our strikers, he's going to be a really, really solid third choice striker for us. His consistency, perhaps a little bit of a problem. But if they, again, a player who's coming in on loan, we aren't paying any contribution towards his wages. So it's kind of a, a nice, safe deal to get done. And then the last transfer we got here is Tom Lees, who we have signed from Burnley on loan. English centre-back, very, very good centre-back at that. I mean, looking at him here, you can see incredibly solid. Uh, he's joined us on loan, of course, from Burnley in the Championship. You can see they signed him for £2.3 million a few years ago from Sheffield Wednesday. He's been a very good, consistent Championship player, playing a lot of first-team football in Burnley. Never really held down a solid centre-back spot, but I think for us, the 32-year-old is going to offer us some nice kind of strength in the centre-back position and particularly slot in nicely with Maloey, the South African, not in the side. So anyway, those are the transfers that have gone in. I just want to show you the kind of transfers that I am trying to do. There are a few that have gone through, but as you can see, a lot of transfers here that just collapsed. Um, we've really not improved as much as I was expecting in terms of our ability to lure in players from abroad. Our club rep is still only one star, uh, which is a little bit of a problem, and it does impact our ability to kind of bring in players just having that national rep. And as you can see here, I've tried to make some ambitious signings. I'm still hoping that Gamilla might join us on loan for the year. Uh, I was able to offer him a contract when I tried to sign him rather than loan him. 
Uh, however, uh, he wanted something like £15,000 a week, which I just couldn't afford to pay him. So I've now gone back to Bilbao with a loan. But I just want to sample kind of for you guys some of the other players that I've tried to sign. We've had players like this guy, Victor Alonso, 19-year-old Spanish striker. Las Palmas want a lot of money for him, unfortunately. Um, but he's a, he's a good player. I mean, there's a lot of players here who we're kind of looking at, and I think they're going to be quite good. We've got this guy... Ismail Dejedi. I really should be scouting these players, but I'm kind of, with these younger players, this guy's coming in for really cheap the Ivory Coast International. I kind of just sign them without, and I kind of see their stats, my face lights up. I see they're actually interested in coming potentially, and then I just sign them without thinking about it. But this guy's quite good. Comes from an all too familiar club to us, ASEC, a team that I can't recommend enough that you kind of check out in your saves. Well, of course, that is the club that Kuaku and Yazatsi uh, Yaya Sinogo but it's just Sonogo, uh, our Ivory Coast centre mid in FM15 uh, for, of course, Lewis came from. Anyway, a few more players here. Uh, who who should I show you? I mean, there's no point in really showing these players because they're just not interested in coming. Zapata is a player who I'm trying to loan. It's now got to the personal negotiation stage. I'm hoping we might be able to get him from Udinese, the Colombian striker. That is probably where we'd be playing him as well as a striker. He looks like a very good player again. I should be scouting these players. I feel like I just panic. I feel like I get excited when I see a player who might be interested. A lot of my players here that you see that I'm signing, they're coming from my manual searches where I'll pretty much go through every single youth team in the world trying to find players. You can see there's more players here who I'm looking at, but they're just not interested in coming. Players like uh, Robles here. Great, great player, 17-year-old Chilean. You know, I found him looking through the South American under-20 squads. He's just not interested in joining us. I mean, part of me wants to try and sign him again. I can't afford £5 million, so that that's not happening. But yeah, bottom line is, you know, I'm trying to sign these players. They're just, they're just not interested. You know, you've got players from uh, Peru. Again, I'm looking through the, the South American under-21s, and these players don't want to join me. It's a little bit kind of uh, discouraging, I guess, when you see all this really good talent, potentially, and it just isn't interested in joining you. We can't even sign players from Melbourne City Youths at the moment in Australia. It's just... It's a little bit disappointing. I've been trying to sign Jair here and actually he wanted to have a chat about contracts and we got to the contract stage and he was wanting £7,000 a week and well this guy, he's a very good 18 year old Brazilian but I, I, couldn't, I couldn't afford the money that he wanted from me unfortunately. But yeah, you can see here, I've been scouting such a wide variety of players and it's just a little bit annoying I guess that we're not able to get too many of them in. I really, really am trying. Um, I mean, there's just some great players here, and I kind of see them, and my face lights up, and I'm thinking, yes, this could be a really good signing for us. And then they just don't want to come. Not Even this guy, Ngom, didn't want to come. 18-year-old Senegalese centre mid, turning me down. It was heartbreaking. It's a little bit disappointing. I'm not sure why that is. I do think last year we perhaps got a little bit lucky with some of the transfers. We got in players like Mark Stewart, very, very unhappy at Celtic at the time, wasn't playing in their first team, was on a tiny wage. Uh, obviously delighted that he signed for us, but we've not been able to find this year's Mark Stewart, this year's player who's going to come in for a significant amount of money and make a difference. Anyway, we are going to get into today's game. We are taking on TNS, as I mentioned. Of course, this is a game in Europe. Worth noting that, obviously, the registration rules mean our squad is a little bit trimmed down. Uh, we have also got an injury to Paul Smith, the man, the myth, the legend. Big injury as well, really. Sports hernia. Out for a good few weeks. We'll probably miss the... Well, I, I, I suspect maybe even the entirety of our Champions League qualifying campaign, really, depending on how the injury pans out. Bouchard in centre mid is also injured, but he is only out with a strained wrist. He's got protective equipment on that. Hopefully that's going to carry him through this game. But yeah, I mean, th this summer, it's been a little bit underwhelming, you know. I thought I might end up spending a lot more money than I have. In some ways, I'm kind of... Part, part of me quite likes the fact, you know, I've not been able to just spend money everywhere, you know. It's been very much a case of trying to you know, hunt out some bargains, and granted at the moment those bargains really haven't come, um, but it does mean, I guess, that we can kind of shift our focus and continue focusing on the team we have here, you know, I, I feel, appreciate over the last few years there has been a big turnover in players, and I guess that's somewhat to be expected with going pro, you know, you really have to strengthen your squad, and well, for us to progress in the save, you know, as harsh as it sounds, a lot of the Gibraltarian players, they're just simply not good enough. And uh, I appreciate for you guys watching, you know, I've had a few comments about it saying, oh, I wish I wish you'd focus more on the, you know, the other, you know, kind of holding on to players, being loyal to some players. And I kind of, I agree with that sentiment to an extent, but that is only ultimately going to hold back the save in the long term. But I guess with a summer like the one we've had here, it kind, it kind of makes sense. It kind of, I don't know. 
maybe maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you know, not signing a load of players this summer and kind of sticking with what we've got is going to serve us well. Have we just scored though? Was that given offside? It was. I was really confused then because the the box at the bottom showed an offside from a previous highlight, and as a result, um, my my mind was just really confused <laughs> as to why the ball went into the back of the net. There wasn't any flashing kind of at the bottom of my screen for the goal. But anyway, let, let's not ramble on here. We're on the attack. Lorenko to Evans. You'll notice, actually, I think the best bit of business we've done this year is actually holding on to our best players. Uh, Stewart up front. I still need to get that £3 million release clause out of his contract if I can. Lorenko getting a lot of bids for him, and he hasn't signed a new contract, and his contract's up at the end of the year. But the big signings, really... Uh, have been Smith and, of course, Bouchard in the midfield. Both of those players, you know, they had interest from teams like PSG. And I offered, actually, Smith out for £5 million, thinking, oh, let's get some money for him from PSG. And we score there. Jackson, nice goal. But, um, yeah, I offered Smith out, thinking, you know, if we can get, you know, £10 million from PSG, I'll take it, kind of giggling a little bit. And I offered him to clubs, and then he came back to me and complained that I'd been offering him out to clubs. Now, that's usually a sign that a player has good loyalty. And off the back of that, I was like, right, if I'm thinking about this, Bouchard and Smith, I need to hold on to these players if I can. Two amazing young talents really made a difference for us last year. And so I offered them both new contracts, and both the players were interested in re-signing with us. And actually, the deals that I gave them, I gave them a good rate wage rise, although I don't believe any of them are on more than £4,000 a week. And in return for that, I'm actually getting them on four-year deals, plus an optional three-year extension at the club. So essentially... We have seven-year contracts tied down to our best two players, and that is something that I'm absolutely delighted about. Like, I can't stress how important that is. And, um, you know, building forward with the future of this team, I now know that I have those two players kind of under lock and key for the next few years. Anyway, good start in this game. We're actually on the attack again here. TNS, they're not the strongest team in the world, the Welsh team. We are expected to beat them. We might have a chance here. Back post, Braun, Bouchard blocked. Evans is still there. Stewart... Can he cut inside? Lays it off to Lorenko, tackled, but, I mean, the attack is still on here. Evans, edge of the box, inside to Bouchard, the Canadian. Lorenko, nice build-up play here. Can there be the end product? Jackson to Marriott. We are just probing here. We are tormenting the TNS defence, stretching them wide, left and right. The question is, is there an end product? And the answer is no, because the highlight had already happened. Look at the stats in this game. We've had three clear-cut chances. That is annoying, and actually, they've got a corner here. Headed away nicely by Bouchard. But, yeah, they've had... They've had so many corners. Uh, not so many corners. We've had so many clear-cut chances. My brain is not working here. Oh, we're on the attack. Go on, Stuart. Oh, you should score there. Lorenko rebound. Well, Lorenko makes sure for us. Makes it 2-0 here. We are away from home, so away goals are important, of course. As was the case last year, and I do believe the year before, we are entering this competition at the second qualifying kind of round, uh, rather than the first round, where you have kind of the six smallest nations clubs play one another. But nice goal by there uh, for Gimo Lorenko. Makes it 2-0. And this has been a good performance. As I mentioned, TNS, they're not expected to win this game. But at the same time, first game of the year, you know, same team as last year. And it's good to see us kind of pick up where we left off. And we're on the attack again here. Jackson tries to switch it to Lorenko. Headed away by their defender all the way up to Norbert. Or Norton. It's because Herbert then got the ball. My, my brain, this is the disadvantage on a Saturday morning of rolling out of bed. This is the issue when you're addicted to FM. You roll out of bed, and without waking up, you sat there playing FM. And, well, we score again. That, 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 the players are awake, even if I'm not. Jackson, second goal of the game for him. Second goal of the season as well. Nice goal. Braun down the left-hand side, filling in for Smith. He's done a good job so far. And Marriott there, the uh, left-back involved in the build-up play. But Jackson, the ball fell to him, and he just rifles it into the roof of the net. Fantastic finish by him. And well, this game this game could be over after the first leg, which is a good sign, obviously. We, we want to keep a clean sheet. We don't want to concede here. We just want to slaughter TNS if we can. Which is, um, I guess, what we're looking like. We're on course to do at the moment at 3-0 up. Of course, a goal for them here. You know, suddenly it's not perhaps quite as comfortable, although we are on the attack. Stewart, Jackson going to be looking for that hat-trick. Lorenko whips it to Jackson. Jackson, back post, scores 4-0. Third goal of the season is hat-trick. Uh, that is another goal. Two in three minutes for him. And th this is the start to the season we wanted. Gone are the days of every single round in Europe being a real challenge for us. A game where, I don't know, there's that element of uncertainty. We've really strengthened the squad. And I feel like, uh, I think the case was last year and the year before really. Going into the second qualifying round now, we are one of the bigger teams and stronger teams in this stage of the competition. And we're really showing it here. We are 4-0 up against TNS. They have not got 
much of a chance in hell of coming back in this game. Although they are on the attack. I want a clean sheet if we can keep it. Agu, Riley, going to be looking for an option maybe in the middle. Join us there. Norton, well, he should be scoring that. TNS with their first shot of the game. It was a clear-cut chance, and they've squandered it. But, I mean, after a first half like that, can't have any complaints whatsoever. The Welsh team, they've just been outclassed by us this year. I am still, of course, going to be on the hunt for perhaps some new signings. I kind of showed a few of the players that I have been looking at. You know, I perhaps have been a little bit too ambitious with my targets. But at the same time, I don't know. I feel like you have to be ambitious with your signings. You have to go to the South American youth teams and see if there's any amazing players up and coming that you can kind of snap up before any major European teams do it. I've still been looking in Asia. I looked, of course, in Australia again. No new talents really emerged there. Um, of course, I, one thing that I have noticed is over the last few years, we've signed a lot of players who haven't really broken into the first team. There was a few Australians we signed with the left winger Smith. You've not really had that impact on the club I was perhaps hoping they'd have when we brought them in on freeze. And I do want to kind of be a little bit more, I, get, I want to say careful, a little bit more stingy, I guess, with who I sign and kind of not leave our squad getting too bloated. Um, we've kind of, I guess we've indirectly achieved that this year so far just because... Well, we've not signed many players at all because we've not been able to find kind of the players that we're looking for. But at the same time, I, I don't know. I feel like that's something we need to be mindful of. TNS, they've given us a gift here. Jackson, he's going to score his fourth of the game. It's 5-0 here. A defensive howler by TNS. And, well, the home fans, they're not happy. Half an hour left. There's empty seats. They've already left. I can see a few of them at the Burger Van. They're just going to eat away their problems. Jackson, well, he just places it into an open net. It was harder to miss. And at 5-0 here, great team performance. Got a few players struggling with fitness. I'm going to make a few changes here. I'm going to bring off Gary and uh, Buchada, bring on Benyu and Nicholas Mohamed. Um, I think we'll keep the rest of the team the same. We don't need to rotate the squad too much. In fact, I'm going to take off Tom Lees, who is the player who we've got on loan from Burnley, uh, just because he's struggling a little bit with match fitness. So we'll make all three changes now. But yeah, great team performance. This really... The team's performed better than I expected. I mean, TNS, to be honest, they've had some chances. They just had another one there, but they've not taken them. And while well, we've had seven clear cut chances and converted five of them into goals, I guess that's a reasonable return on what we've done. I mean, we'd like more goals if we can get them. We've got a set piece here as well. Lorenko, Cross doesn't beat the first man, but Mohamed, the sub, he's going to want to impress. Lays off Lorenko, shoots. Stevens with a nice saving goal there for TNS. Might still have another chance. Back post, headed away. Thomas, I feel like, I was about to say, I feel like this is a point that's highlight, and it was. Ten minutes left. We want six, boys. Medina, we've got six. This has been a slaughter of the lambs. Alan Medina making it 6-0 away from home. He got booked early on in the game. Part of me wanted to sub him off, but we've kept him on, and, well, the young captain of this side gets a good header and gets a good goal. It's 6-0. Our fans are loving it in the away end. And I think it's fair to say that this is game over in this entire tie. Of course, we will be back for the second leg. But, I mean, it, it, it's nice to be the team inflicting these kind of results in Europe. I think back to the first few years of the save, you know, the games against Leipzig, against Copenhagen, where we did get slaughtered in the first legs. We are now the team doing the slaughtering, kind of the pecking order has changed, I guess you could argue. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this half of the commentary. I'll be back for the second half. I'm going to try and sign some players if I can, see how we get on. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back for the second leg of this game that I think it's fair to say has already been decided. Okay, guys, so we are back here for the second leg. Fantastic performance in that first leg. 6-0 win. I don't think we're going to lose this game. I mean, things would have to go the most horribly wrong I've ever seen them go in FM. I think once I won a game 4 or 5 nil and ended up losing the second leg, like 6 nil. I don't think I've ever slipped up from a 6 nil lead. That 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 game that when it happened, I cried. I cried for weeks. I don't I think I quit FM when that happened for like a, for like months. I was that hurt by it. Anyway, uh, let's get into today's game. Looking at the team, nothing too crazy going on if I'm honest. We're going to stick with the exact same team as last time out, I think. Um Squad fitness is good again. Matt Sharpness is slowly getting there for the majority of players. So, yeah, let's crack on into the second half, obviously. Um, we should be doing uh, a good job here. We should be winning this game very comfortably. If we could get another six, that would be fantastic. The uh, third round draw has been made. And whilst I can't remember the exact names of the teams, uh, the teams that we've been drawn against are from Lithuania and Poland. Of course, they have still got to decide who wins in their game. Um, but yeah, it definitely could have been a lot harder, our third round draw, and I'm, having seen the teams, I'm pretty confident that we can make it through 
uh, that round. It was a pretty kind draw on us. But anyway, we've got to focus here and now. We're on the attack. Bouchard, Marriott, can you whip in a ball, my son? To Jackson, got four goals last time out. He wins a penalty in the first three minutes of this game. What a start to the game. Fantastic team performance last time out, and we kick things off in the exact same gear. Lorenko misses a penalty. Suddenly, the, the, we've lost our gear. The chains come off our bike. We're rolling down a hill. Maybe we can get it back on. Maybe we can get it back on. Stewart, options in the middle. Bouchard to Gary. Back out wide with Evans. Crosses it. Back post. Braun is there. The chain is back on. We're back on our bike. We are pedalling our way into the third qualifying phase of the Champions League. 1-0. I think I'm going to change it so that we have 3D highlights on and then no 2D classic just to help speed things up. But yeah, so far, so good. I mean, we couldn't ask for a better start in our Champions League campaign. I must admit, at the time, I was pretty darn delighted when we got TNS. I thought that was a very nice draw for us, but there were certainly harder teams that we've avoided. Our third round draw is very much in the same mould as that, I think. And, well, if we perform like this, we should be winning comfortably. Jackson there, fifth goal of the season for him. And it's 2-0 here after 12 minutes. And TNS, their, fa their fans, they've travelled from Wales in their green and white hoops. And right now, well, a lot of them are all wearing red shirts and in the exact same pose looking at the ground if we're looking at it carefully. But they don't look very happy. They look sad. Head in hands. They've, they've paid all this money. The holiday season's over in Gibraltar. It's not even like half the bars are open. And it's not looking great for them. Although... I mean, they'll, they'll be looking for a goal. I, I want blood here. I want more. Bar with a big clearance up, of course. Uh, Hamid Bar, our goalkeeper from Morocco, got that 500 or £600 pound release clause. No one has met that yet, which I'm pleased about. I'm hoping we can renew his contract and get him on a new deal at the club at some point this year. But anyway, coming forward with the ball, Jackson. Well, he almost dribbled it out of play. Wins us a corner. Can we make something happen here? Lorenko whips it in back post, headed away. Braun is there. Back into the mix. And McKenna with a second clearance. And, well... If that's the highlight, that was incredibly underwhelming, although there might be more coming here. We're still on the attack. Gary switches it. Lorenko's there, not relocated, having taken the corner. Out wide with Marriott. Whips it in, and the, as, as expected, really, the highlight ends. But 40 minutes gone here. Only 2-0. Jeremy Braun getting injured. That is not an injury I want to see, and the reason I don't want to see that injury is because um, we are already a little bit short on left midfielders. Of course, Smith is out injured. Not, not, Ad wait, is Adam Smith fit? Do we have two Adam Smiths now? I'm really, I've got to check this. I didn't even realise that we have two Smiths. We have Paul Smith, oh, that's going to get so confusing having Adam Smith and Paul Smith. Paul Smith is the good one, Adam is the new low knee. I got really confused there for a second because they have the same hair in game. They have like the same haircut, like dark hair. So I was really confused for a second. I was sat there thinking, he's injured. How's that happening? Anyway, 3-0 here. Jackson, he's, he's scored again. He's got six. He's going to be the Champions League top goal scorer after two games. Free kick taken here. And we're on the attack again. Stewart bringing the ball forward. We want four before half time. Ball cannot find its way to Jackson. It might this time. Headed away. We are just trying to punt the ball over the top. Marriott here trying to punt it in. Bouchard, Stewart, Lorenko. Lorenko scores. It's 4-0 on the night. It's 10-0 on aggregate. The Welsh, you might as well get on your plane right now and go back to Wales because it's all over here. 10-0. I mean, it was over after the first leg, if we're honest. But in this second leg, we've we've turned up the heat a little bit more. We want 8 in this game. I want an 8-0 win. I want to win 14-0 on aggregate. I want Jackson to get 10 goals after two games of the Champions League. That's the dream. Bouchard with Gary. Up to Smith. Inside to Stewart. Is that a penalty? Not given. Not given. Gary with the ball now. Can we build again from the back? Evans, the ginger ninja to Bouchard. Lorenko, Fred through Stewart. Stewart should be scoring that all day, every day. He hasn't. The keeper has kept him out there. And it's still only 4-0. Ball whipped in though. Are we going to score this time? Medina, he got a goal in the first leg. He was lurking there for another. Lorenko, options in the middle to Marriott. The fullback whips in. Back post. Jackson's there. Cannot find the net. Evans though whips in and Jackson... Second time of asking. Scores his second hat-trick in two games. He loves it. He loves playing against TNS. And I'm loving it too. He's got a hat-trick there. He got four goals last time out, was it? He needs three more goals this game to get the ten goals after two games I, I demanded from him. I'm going to make a few changes here. You know, just rotate a few players. Stuart, I'm going to take off for Kuka. 
Uh, I think we're also going to bring on Mohamed, and I'm going to bring him on in place of Gary in the midfield. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to bring on Ben Yu in replacement of Gary. We'll make all three of our subs now. 20 minutes left, 5-0 on the night. If we can match the 6-0 from before, that would be good enough for me. Been a fantastic performance here, though. Bouchard, Ben Yu, Marriott whips it in. Jackson's there again. He hits the post. Lorenko, can he score a rebound? He can't. Sean Jackson greedily runs after it from an offside position. What a performance this has been, though. We have just asserted our dominance across both legs here. It's really... It's, it's nice to see the team progressing like this because for a while we've been that team who gets spanked, you know, 6-7-0 in Europe. I mean, we still are if you look back to the PSG games. But, yeah, with performances like this, cannot complain one little bit. TNS having their second or third shot of the tar on target of the game there. Keeper collecting it. Now we're on the attack again. Evans, Bouchard... Kicks it up. Lorenko's there. Can we score again? Ben Yu. Jackson wants his eighth. He's not going to get his eighth. Kuka's got it. Makes it 6 0. Ian Kuka, the Canadian, coming on off the bench. Grabs us a goal. The fans are in raptures in the stadium. And it's been a, a fantastic team performance so far. And that is going to be game set and matches. 6 0, 6 0, 12 0 on aggregate. Fantastic performance. Can't complain about that. And we go marching on into the next round of the Champions League here. And uh, yeah, TNS took one hell of a beating that game. I mentioned the fact we'd have a team to play. Uh, we'll have a look at who that's going to be in just a second. Jeremy Braun, strained knee ligaments. That is a bad injury to get. Good performance though against TNS. I got I got an offer accepted for someone. Oh, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to join. Never mind. I'm, I'm still trying just to find any random South American players I can at this point, but they're not interested. Um, what was I going to look at? I was going to look at the fixtures. So I need to cancel the friendlies that I've scheduled in between now because, well, we're still in Europe. I, I always schedule them in just in case. Next uh, match, we're going to be taking on Lech Poznan. I'm probably pronouncing that horrifically. They're a team from Poland. Uh, I actually had a, look, a little look through their squad. They've got a few pretty good young players, actually, who are regens. And if I'm honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind stealing a few of them. Um... But yeah, they, they've got some good players. They're not a crazily good side. I still favour us, but um, it's not going to be a super easy tie. They've got quite a lot of half-decent virtual players. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode from me. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, smash the like button. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.